Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. Okay, so this video will be um, based on um, the resolution of um, forces, okay, for basic mechanics, okay. So we'll be, um, you'll be introduced to the various um, concepts, okay, in simple terms, the most important concepts, okay. So I'll be treating the simplest approach to finding the um, the magnitude of the forces, the angle of the resultant forces, and then how to find the resolution of forces forces with respect to um the x and then what the y axis. Okay, so without further much I do, let's just dive right into this um tutorial video. And in case you are new to this channel, I would urge you to you know subscribe to the channel hit on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any uploaded video like the video share to your colleagues who might need this um, video to help augment their studies and then in case you have any questions throughout the video you just leave them down in the comment section and then i will do my best possible best to reply to the questions okay right so let's 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 see um okay so you know that this is basically uh, x and y as is okay right so you'll be always told to you know resolve the forces with respect to the x and y axis so one thing you need to know is that once you understand this concept okay basic mechanics will just be um a work in the path for you okay it will just be a work in the path for you once you understand this concept because this is the backbone of um basic mechanics okay just like atoms, molecules, and what elements are the basic backbone of what chemistry, okay? Right. Okay, so let's let's proceed. So you will be told to find what the resultant force of what or the summation of forces along the x, okay, and then summation of forces along the y. Okay, so this is basically something like this Rx, okay, and then what Ry. Now with this, I'll be also introducing, so this is the what? The rectangular component approach, okay? So the rectangular components of forces, okay? The rectangular component of what? Forces, okay? And then I'll be introducing you to what? The parallelogram and then triangular approach. That's where you'll be, you'll be introduced to what? The cosine rule and what? The sine rule, okay? So the cosine rule and the sine rule only comes in when you are told to find what? A mixing force, okay? So let's say you are given two forces and then you are told to find a third force, okay? Or you are given one force, and you are told to find the second force, okay? So I'll, so basically, this is the what the par parallelogram law, okay? And sometimes um, we introduce a triangular law, okay? So it's embedded in here, okay? So let me let me um, illustrate what we mean by the triangular law. Now, when you take a triangle, for example, not a right angle triangle, okay? Just a, a triangle, okay. Three sided, um, three sided figure, okay. So we have a certain angle A, okay, certain angle B, and certain angle C, okay. Right, this way we introduce our what the sine law or what the cosine law, okay. That's where you are trying to find a missing force or what a missing angle. So, note that, okay. So the A, B, C are what forces, okay, and then the lowercase A, B, C are what angles, okay. So now this is how we apply the triangular rule or triangular law. Now, from here, you could notice that this ang an angle C, okay. So most definitely we have we have to have a force C over here directly opposite to that angle, okay. Same applies to this portion, and then same applies to this side, okay. So you could notice that these angles are just directly opposite to their forces okay they are directly opposite to their forces okay directly opposite to their forces right so this is how we implement what the triangular law so once you take the force you divide it by what the sign of the angle okay just like here so we have this force and then it's been divided by the sign of the angle sign a b okay force b divided by the sign of the angle b and then it goes on like that. Now we normally take two two um 
scenarios okay so two forces okay so that's where we are giving what either a and then we have to find b okay force a and we have to find force b and then we already know what the angle for the force b okay and that for a and then the only missing part is just the b so you just implement your formula and then you end up with what the final answer you solve a simple question so that you get to understand okay now let's dive right into some examples so that this becomes clearer right so let's start from what the rectangular component force approach so let's say you've been given what a simple um body maybe you are given what now right so we have what 20 degrees over here and then we have what right so we have 25 degrees and then what 20 degrees and then we have what uh, x axis so we are told to resolve these forces along the what x and then y axis okay and then find the magnitude and then the what the angle now i'm about to teach you the the simplest trick nobody will ever tell you okay so kindly pay attention once you understand this concept you are good to go but once you don't trust me um base mechanic be, uh, mechanics might sound um calm or something confusing to understand okay but once you understand what i'm about to teach you right now you are good to go luckily enough uh, i've already done a video on this simple approach so when you once you go to the play uh, playlist on what basic mechanics you might find it over there but this is an introductory um tutorial video okay right from basic mechanics okay so once you go through this and then you understand this you are also good to go now so for the you know that for the resultant forces we have what forces along the x square okay plus the forces along the y squared okay and then we have what taking the angle that's what tan inverse of what f y on what f x okay keep these two formulas in mind okay right now let's dive right into the the approach now this is all you need to know okay kindly pay attention so that you understand this portion it's very very crucial important right now we have to use um cos and cosine and with sine okay now listen to this part attentively because i might not repeat it again so you'll be using it or applying it throughout the rest of the um examples okay now so we have to use either cosine or what sine now this is what you need to know once you are resolving the forces along the x axis okay so once you are resolving the forces along the x axis you need to make sure that um the angle in between the force in between okay let me put it this way the angle must always lie in between the force and the x axis okay once you are resolving the force along the x axis the, once the angle lies in between the force and then the x axis you use cosine okay again let me repeat this again once you are resolving the forces along the x axis you need to take note of this and then you find out that the the angle lies in between the force and the x axis you use cosine okay let me repeat that again when you are resolving the forces along the x axis and then you notice that the angle between the force and the x axis the angle lies in between the force and the x axis you use cosine okay so when you are resolving the forces along the x axis and the angle lies in between the force and the x axis you use cosine and then once the angle once the angle doesn't lie in between the the force and the what the x axis you use sine okay that's when you are resolving along the x axis okay so once you are resolving along the x axis the, and then the angle line lying between the force and x axis you use cosine but when the angle doesn't lie in between the force and the x axis you use sine okay that's for um resolving along the x axis now once you are resolving the force along the y axis the same um approach is being used the angle must lie in between the the x axis and the force okay to give you what cosine but when the angle doesn't lie 
in between the the y axis and the force you use sine okay so let's take the first example now we are resolving it along the x axis so from here you can notice that the angle lying between the force and the x axis so this will be what cosine okay so we have what Forty cos twenty degrees now, and then this in the direction of the positive x axis. Okay, so this will be positive. Okay, so this will be positive now. Let's proceed. So now we are at sixty newtons now. Sixty for sixty newtons. Okay. The angle lying between what the sixty newton and the x axis. So we have what cos. Okay. And from here you could notice that we have 25 degrees and what 20 degrees okay so we have 25 okay plus 20 so when you compute all of this you end up with what when you punch this on your calculator so let's punch this on our calculator so we have what 40 cos 20 so you end up with what 80 newtons okay for the x axis will give us 8 newtons. Now let's take a look at what resolving along the y axis. Okay, so you notice that for the 40 newtons, the angle doesn't lie in between the force and then the y axis. Okay, the angle lies in between the force and the x axis. So it will be what sine. Okay, we will use sine. So we have 40, 40 sine of what 20 degrees. Okay. Plus, okay, so along the positive y axis, okay, and then we have 60. So the angle also again lies in between the 60 newtons and then the what the x axis. So we use what sign because once it doesn't lie in between the force and then the y axis, we use sign, but once it lies in between, we use cos, okay. But for for this um, example, you could notice that the angles lie in, be in between the 60 newtons and the x axis, so we use what sign as initially indicated. So we have what 60 sine of what 25 plus 20. Okay, so when you punch this, you end up at what this 41.965 newtons. Okay, right. So from here, you could just find the resultant. Okay. Our resultant will be just um eighty squared plus forty one point nine six five squared, and then when you punch this on your calculator, you end up with what ninety point three four newtons. Okay, so let's find the angle. So we have theta equals what. An inverse of um, 41 okay from here okay from this formula okay we have 41.965 divided by what 8 okay so when you compute this you end up with what when you point this on your calculator you end up with what 27.68 degrees okay so let's this brings us to the end of this um question okay so let's take another question so that um, it becomes clearer okay so let's say we have what uh x and y axis okay and then this a force this another force okay so we have um this 150 newtons okay and this um 100 newtons okay so we have an angle of what 15 degrees over here okay so let me rewrite that okay so we have an angle of 15 degrees okay and then we have what 10 degrees over here and then note that these are positive x and then what positive y so we have to resolve the force along the x and y okay so now let's see let's see how we go by that so resolving the force along the x axis so you could notice that this angle 15 degrees lies in between what the force and the x axis so it's what we use cosine okay so we have 100 
cos of 15 okay degrees and then we have what 150 okay angle of 150 sorry force of 150 okay so for 150 you can notice that the angle okay the angle between the angle doesn't lie the angle for the 150 um newton doesn't lie in between the x and the force okay so from here you can notice that the angle for 150 lies in between what the 150 newtons and the y axis okay the 150 newtons and the y axis but in case the 10 degrees was supposed to be here in case it was supposed to be here okay then we would have used cos okay cosine that'd be that's because the angle is in between the force and the x axis that's when we are resolving along the x axis but now we are resolving along the x axis but the angle tend to lie in between the y axis and the force so we use what sine okay right so we have sine of 10 newtons okay now let's see what this will give us okay so when you punch 100 cos 15 okay plus 150 sine of 10 degrees okay you end up with what one two two point six four newtons okay so now let's resolve along the what the y axis okay so we have this okay so now let's see now we are resolving along the y axis so here from here you can notice that the the angle 15 degrees lies in between the the 100 the 100 newtons force and the x axis so we have what sine okay so we have 100 sine of what 15 degrees plus what from here you could notice that the angle lies in between the 115 newtons and the y axis since we are resolving along the y axis this will be what cosine okay so we have 150 cosine of what 10 degrees so let's compute this okay so we have what 100 sine of 15 okay plus 150 cosine of 10 degrees okay so we end up with what 173.6 newtons okay so let's try find the resultant okay so the resultant will be what 122.64 squared okay plus plus 173 okay right so we have what plus 173.6 squared okay so let's try compute that so we have 122.64 squared okay plus 173.6 squared okay so we end up with what 212.55 newtons okay so let's find the angle so by now you would have been able to calculate for the angle okay so we have tan inverse of what 173.6 okay divided by 122.64 okay so let's find the angle so we have tan inverse of 173.6 divided by 122.64 okay right so you have what the angle of what 54.76 right so this will be the what the final answer for this question now let's say you have been given something quite different okay so let's say you've been given the question in this format okay so we've been doing dealing with what angles and all that but let's say you've been given the question in this format okay how will you approach the question now so when resolving along the x axis okay we use similar approach okay we use similar approach right so these are false right now this is what a hypotenuse most definitely adjacent and then we have our what, opposite so we have the 90 degrees over here and then the angle over here now so these are opposite adjacent and hypotenuse so that's why you implement so katoa okay so we have so ka but the 12 won't be used in this um, scenario okay so you only focus on so and ka now 
so is what opposite hypotenuse and then what chi is what adjacent hypotenuse so from here we resolve now the force along the x axis okay so we have what the 15 newtons now we take into consideration whether the whether the angle lies okay in between the force and the x axis or the angle lies outside the force and then the x axis or the angle lies in between the force and the y axis or angle lies outside the force the force and what the y axis now from here you could notice that we have this angle lying in between the x what and the force okay so from here you could use we'll be using what ka okay cosine okay the angle is in between this is the angle okay so it's lying between the force and then the x the angle this is the angle okay and it's lying between the 50 kilo newtons and the x axis so we use what cosine so this is what we'll be using ka so up adjacent hypotenuse so we have what 50 kilo newtons and then we have adjacent is what four and then we have hypotenuse that's what five okay right so when you compute this you end up with what 40 kilo newtons okay so now let's resolve along the what y axis okay so from here you could notice that this angle lies in between the force and the x axis not in between the what the force and the what the y axis so we have sine okay so we'll be using so so opposite hypotenuse so we have what 50 and then we have our what opposite hypotenuse so opposite is what three and then we have what hypotenuse which is five okay so when you compute this you end up with what 30 kilonewtons okay so from here we could just find out resultant okay so our resultant will be 40 squared plus 30 squared okay and then we end up at what we have 40 squared plus 30 squared so we have what 50 kilo newtons okay so from here you can notice that we've um ended up with what the exact resultant force over here okay and let's find the angle so we are trying to find this angle okay tan inverse of what um 30 times 10 exponent what three because it's kilo okay and then we have what 40 times 10 exponent three okay so we end up at what so tan inverse of 30 times 10 exponent three and then 40 times 10 exponent three okay all right so we end up with what 36.87 degrees okay right so this will be the angle over here okay 36.87 will be this angle okay right hope this was quite simple okay so let, let's dive right into the last um question last question okay that's what we'll be implementing the parallelogram rule okay this rule parallelogram rule okay right so let's see so let's say you've been given question this form okay right and then we have that we have this is let's say this what um let's say this 200 pounds okay and then we have this force okay right and then we have a y axis okay these are x axis okay and then from here we have what 30 degrees okay and then we have um 45 degrees so from here you can notice that you cannot straight um straight away use the what the rectangular component of forces approach okay because we have um one force given but the other is not given okay so this is where we implement our what the parallelogram and triangular law okay so now let's see how we can redraw this in the form of what or uh, so that it could look like what a triangle okay now from here you could notice that this will be a 90 degrees okay so this is a right angle triangle so this is what a 90 degrees so let me use a different color so that you get to understand 
so this is what a 19 degrees okay so since this is 60 sorry since this is 30 degrees most definitely this will be what uh, 60 degrees okay so this portion will be 60 this will be 30 and that that will give us what a 90 so the same applies over here this is 45 so here will be what also 45 okay now let's proceed let's proceed so let's join this these uh, lines okay now so since this angle is 45 this is quite opposite angles okay so this is 45 so it means that this angle is also what 45 degrees okay this is also 45 degrees let me rewrite that okay since this angle is 45 they are directly opposite angles so because so we have what because it's 45 degrees we have um this angle being equal to 45 degrees okay and then we have 60 degrees over here now from here you can notice that we have this diagram okay we now have this diagram so we have what 60 degrees over here okay we have 45 degrees over here okay right so you don't know the angle over here so most definitely you your guy your guess might be as right as mine the sum of the angles within this um triangle must sum up towards 180 degrees okay the angles might they must sum up to 180 so we have got 45 degrees plus 60 degrees okay plus a specific angle okay let's see x they all must sum up towards 180 so once we find x so when you compute this uh, x will be around 70 something okay 45 60 yes this will be 75 degrees okay you can also point your, your calculator to verify okay so we have 45 plus 60 okay plus x equal to what 180 yes so we have 75 degrees okay so this angle is what 75 degrees now this is where we can now implement our cosine and sine rule okay so from here you know that this is what 200 pounds okay so this is what uh, 200 pound force okay and then since this line is just um the same as this line okay this line okay this force line is the same as this one so we have what force over here okay and then this will be a resultant force okay so take note that always whenever you meet the straight line okay that's your resultant force okay so these or these two forces when you take their um resultants you end up with um this f r value okay right so let's let's proceed from there so now we know we know um uh, angle over here 60 45 and then we know 75 now let's try find what f okay so here you could use a sign rule so when using your sign rule you could just use what 200 pounds okay so we have 200 pounds divided by what the angle which is directly opposite that's 45 degrees so we have what sign 45 degrees okay and then we equate that towards this force f divided that by what sine of 60 because it's directly opposite okay just like here okay that's why that's why i, I initially explained this portion of the words the entire um concepts of the parallelogram law okay so we have what sine of so from here we have what um 200 okay sine of 60 okay divided by what sine of 45 degrees okay sine of 45 degrees so let's find the force f okay when you compute this you end up with what 200 sine of um 60 divided by sine of 45 okay you end up with a force of 244 four, okay 0.95 pound okay pound force okay and then so from here we have what our force to what two four four point 
nine five okay so let's find the fr okay the resultant okay so you find the fr we use the same approach okay so we don't know fr okay so but we know what x which is what's already what 75 degrees okay so we have sine of what 75 and then we equate that to what any force okay where we already know the, the corresponding angle to that force so let's take our initial force of what 200 okay and then divide by what sine of 45 okay sine of 45 so we know that fr will be equal to what 200 sine of what 75 degrees okay and then divided by what sine of what 45 degrees okay now let's compute for fr so for fr we have what 200 sine of 75 degrees and then we have sine of what 45 degrees okay so we end up with what the resultant force to be what 27 what to be point two pounds okay so yes this brings us to the end of um this tutorial video i hope this video was very very helpful okay so in case you have any questions just leave them in the comment section and i'll reply to them as soon as possible can you like the video share to your friends who might need this video okay because busy mechanics might some sometimes um look overwhelming and then confusing okay so this video might help um solve their dilemma okay subscribe to the channel okay and then i will see you in the next video bye bye